I call it the party of common sense. And we're people of common sense. Who wants to have an open border where millions of people are coming into our country, right? Millions and millions. And not just from South America. They're coming in from Africa, from, from the Middle East, from Europe, from all over the world. We're going to be paying for this for a long time. Now, I'm going to do the big deportation, the biggest ever. Eisenhower did the biggest. This will be bigger. But it's a, it's a very tough thing. What they've done to our country is unthinkable that they could do this. And so many other things. I mean, like, you go into New York, the kids can't have Little League games anymore. It sounds so trivial, right? Why? Because the migrants are living on the fields. They have all tents, unless you want to play around the tents. It's a little bit tough. <laughs> it's a little That's bit tough obvious. to play. There you got former <laughs> President Donald Trump revealing his plan to fix the border crisis in an exclusive TV interview with our buddies at Fox and Friends Weekend. What a great get. Congratulations, guys. It comes as the White House is set to unveil sweeping executive actions. As we learn, more than 5 million illegal immigrants have crossed the southwest border since Biden took office. Joining us now to discuss this wide-ranging interview, at least that's what they agreed to in the pre-interview. Look at this. Fox and Friends How Weekend co-host Pete Hegseth playing wide left. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, in the gotcha. center square is Rachel Campos Duffy, one woman, three names, and Will Kane <laughs> right next to me. You guys dress exactly alike. How dare you mimic me? He looks at you, television screen. When you got dressed, you were yeah. just in your underwear and, and uh, muscle t shirt <laughs> And you still what chose to wear the same. We looked at each other, texted each other as we always do first thing mm -hmm. in the morning and said, let's dress, dress like, like Brian. Yep. <laughs> dress like Brian. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> right. I know. No inspiration. All right. Congratulations, guys. What were, what were his spirits like? Because he had just been convicted or um, the verdict came down on fr Friday? Friday. Thursday. Thursday. Y'all yeah. got the interview on Saturday. Yeah, but he had mentioned he'd played 27 holes and had nine birdies so he was feeling really good yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it was it was amazing how um within himself and stoic he was in that m moment but also of, in good nature he realized what had just happened he realized the the way in which it had been rigged against him and was content to say hey i'm going to keep fighting it was amazing his dip disposition was as good as it was. And his energy i mean so he did the the golf in the morning then he had a fundraiser he had a 90 minute interview with us then he did another fundraiser and then he went to the ufc uh fight Fight. I keep telling me to say. I keep saying tournament. <laughs> um, <laughs> fight, and then um, you know that was at 9:30 p.m. So this yeah. guy is irrepressible. His energy and his spirits were very high, and I think that's remarkable considering that the questions stirring around him, which are you know, mm -hmm. Pete asked it, are you going to be in jail? Are you going to be in house arrest? These are the kind of questions that Venezuelans and Cubans ask about the opposition mm -hmm. candidate. Well, it's I'm crazy. I messaged y'all yesterday because when a Trump he stays on message. You guys were able to get new stuff from him, though, of is he going to go after uh, the Democrats like they went after him? Uh, Y'all pressed him on policy of when it comes to the Ukraine, because a lot of people say like, he's not an he's not answering that question. He told y'all why he's not answering that question, how he's going to do that deal between Putin and Z Zelensky. Will. Well, you're referencing two of my uh, favorite parts of the interview, I think, and we bumped in talking about illegal immigration. Right. We asked him, OK, but can you actually deport all of the illegal immigrants mm -hmm. in the country? And can the public stomach the visuals of what those deportations would look like? And he said, that's a, that's a great point, because it's going to be very tough. They're going to put that on television. They're it's going to be big. It's going to be big, but he said he's still going to go after deportations. Um, yeah, and Lawrence, he also said, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. In the past, he said, I want to de-weaponize the DOJ. But now he said, what am I supposed to do? Now it's been used against me. I mean, I don't. And he, and, Rachel asked, I followed up, and both times she goes, it's a tough question, and to be honest with you, I don't know what I'm going to do should I be elected president of the United States and how I'll use the DOJ. I go back to Rocky too. When uh, Adrian was coming out of a coma, she looked at uh, Rocky and said, what should I do? And he said, win. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, just like Adrian, he ended up, I don't want to give it away, but he does win yeah. uh, the fight. But just like he's got to win first, and then I yeah. think he'll look at but that. But he first. did reference the the UFC fighters that he was going to go see the the, right. the night that later that night, and he said, you know, they go in, they hate each other, and then they come out after the win, and they're friends. And he said, that's what I thought it was going to be like after I won, but it wasn't. Right. And that's why he said to Will, I don't know what it's going to be like now because of what they did to me. And I think a lot of his supporters want to fight fire with fire because they feel like that's the only way this will, will this will end because playing nice obviously doesn't work well the big win is the first tuesday in november and we're talking about who's going to win the presidency of course it really hinges for all of us on the economy and how are we going to uh, get uh, you know ahead from where we are right now under joe biden's administration and here's what he told you guys about just that
we're $34 trillion in debt. We've printed money we don't have, yeah. uh, which led to massive inflation. How do you change that and turn that around to average Americans out there who are struggling every single day, worse and worse, under Joe Biden's economy? So we were doing great. We were energy independent. We were soon going to be energy dominant. I didn't want the Russian pipeline to be built because of the fact, very simple, I wanted to supply them with the energy. The whole thing was all of, we're going to make a fortune. We have more liquid gold than any country in the world, including Saudi Arabia and including, and then I do Anwar in Alaska, which is the biggest find. It's as big as Saudi Arabia. Some people say it's bigger. And Biden closes it up in his first week. The first Department of Interior, the woman who, the person in charge, closed it in her first day in office. Ronald Reagan tried to get it. He couldn't get it. Everybody tried to get it. Bush, I got it. And they closed it up, but I'm going to reinstitute it very quickly. It'll happen very fast. But, but think of it. So we were rocking and rolling. We were energy independent. We were soon going to be double the size. We were in third place and even beyond that when I took over. We were leading. You have to see a graph. Russia, Saudi Arabia above them, Russia second, we're third. And then we go like this. I mean, we were, we were going to be energy dominant. We were doing things. The way you have to solve it is through growth. And but we were going to have cutting, to cutting, right, Mr. President? Yes, growth and cutting. The problem I had is we were starting to really rock and roll. We had the greatest economy ever. So the thing is, he's got a plan, which would appeal to a lot of people, because right now what is working is not that plan. Absolutely. You got uh, Joe Biden's plan, and it's stinking up the place for a lot of people. And you heard it in the first clip, too. He kept going back to common sense. That's a theme he's hit mm -hmm. a lot. You know, you can talk about conservatism, and people don't think in those terms. They think in terms of common sense. Do I have the income that I need right. to meet the expenses that I have? Is the border secure? Do I support the cops? He talked about, why are you transing the kids? You know, is our military strong? Mm -hmm. Just basic, I, and he kept going back to that. We, we pressed on the legal issues a lot, and he answered those questions, but also moved a lot, oftentimes, over to policy, bread and butter policy issues Good. that yeah. meet people where they're at. Well, they both asked, Rachel and Pete both pressed him just to follow up on that clip and the questions. Okay, it's easy to say you'll cut, what will you cut? And he said, Department of Education, he did. Department of Interior, yeah. He yeah. talked about specifics on the hardest thing to honestly do in government, which is reduce government. You know what's something that uh, maybe America hasn't thought about? How do other countries look to us now? How, how does this affect our reputation in other places? This is what Kevin O'Leary had to say. It really dominated the conversation in institutional meetings, asking me, what is this? Is that really America? Because we don't, the G20 countries, G7 countries, you usually do not do this to former leadership because you're protecting the sovereign brand. Think about the big picture and what America means to the rest of the world. It's the largest economy on earth. Everybody should ask themselves, do we want to belittle someone that was in the White House, make him pick up garbage on the street or, or jail him? I mean, this is the American brand we're talking about. I mean, guys, it's such a good point, especially when you look at some of the stuff other politicians have done. And, and Democrats saying, oh, oh, it's about the rule of law. Okay, they were okay with him uh, take Teddy Kennedy drowning a woman in the pool and then covering it up. So right. wh what is the difference now with Donald Trump uh, being in office? Well, I, I think I really love when Kevin O'Leary came on and talked to us yesterday about that, that, you know, he sees it as a marketer and America as a business, much like the president does, that our brand is damaged. I can tell you very clearly in Latin America, that is true. In Latin America, just take Venezuela, for example, the last person to run uh, the mayor of Caracas was put on house arrest for insurrection. Mm -hmm. um, this, there was another woman who was going to run and she couldn't run because they made it ineligible. Everyone knows what happened to Bolsonaro. Making it impossible to vote for your candidate or putting them in on house arrest or jail is very very common in these kind of countries and it is unheard of in our country and New York and, is damaged too and I think mm -hmm. a lot of Latin America I think a lot of Hispanic Americans are horrified by what they see because they left dysfunctional corrupt countries mm -hmm. to come here because they thought nothing like that could ever happen and it's happening and I think honestly the way Donald Trump is taking this is is very well. I think a lot of other people would be even more angry. You know, on the brand, the this interview, which we're we're all very proud of, is getting picked up in a lot of other places as well. And one of the things that that those who would criticize are pointing to is that Donald Trump said, um, "I didn't really say lock Hillary Clinton up." What they're what they are missing is a much larger point that was being made, and it is reflective of the brand of America. And that is this: 
He didn't, he didn't lock up <laughs> yeah. Hillary Clinton. He didn't Clinton. even try. Yeah. Didn't even try to lock up Hillary yeah. Clinton. And we're talking and about this in, in a interview. moment yeah. where they did, in effect, mm -hmm. try to lock up and Governor Ron DeSantis Donald Trump. running against him brought that up. You didn't follow through and lock up Hillary Clinton. Meanwhile, I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.